before all the music in the world could be played on this, and this, and yes, even before this, you had to get a turntable, set the needle, and play this. In 1948, Columbia released the very first long play, or LP, vinyl record. This 20 minute recording began a major music revolution until the rise of cassettes and CDs toppled vinyl from its throne. Still, diehard music enthusiasts held on to the vinyl tradition, and it didn't take long for it to launch a comeback tour. In 2016, 3.2 million LPs were sold, the most in 25 years. To keep up with demand, the OG LP producer, United Record Pressing, had to move to a bigger location here in Nashville, Tennessee. It's the musical encore many audiophiles have been waiting for. To make a hit record, you first need a hit song. A band or musician will record their masterpiece in a studio, then send the high quality file to a sound engineer. In this room full of machines, an engineer will use Pro Tools to level out the music before connecting it to the cutting amps. These amps feed directly to the cutting lathe, decked out with an actual ruby chisel. As the song plays, the vibrating ruby engraves specific grooves into a lacquer disc, each cut signifying a different sound wave. Fun fact, if you yell close to the ruby, it will engrave your sound waves and your voice will be recorded. A single disc can hold up to 2,600 feet of lines, enough to span the length of seven football fields. The first lacquer disc is the mother disc, used as a mold to create a master stamp. Each master can be used to press about 100,000 records. First, the disc gets washed, then sprayed with chloride, followed by liquid silver to fill in the grooves. Once the silver is layered on, the disc is dipped into a nickel solution for several hours. This hardens the silver into a layer that can then be peeled away, cut, trimmed, and perfected. United Record Recording has a special way of safely archiving and cataloging the masters, and they have thousands in their library. It's time to add a little heat. To make the actual vinyl record, polyvinyl chloride pellets are melted down in the hopper into a biscuit-shaped pup. The presses first apply labels, which center the record and keep it from warping. Then, the two silver stamps are placed on either side of the pup, and over 60 tons of pressure flatten the vinyl into a thin blade. Lastly, the excess vinyl, known as flash, is shaved off and saved for reuse. The final result? A record less than two millimeters thick, but coated with the secret language of music. Of course, all this work might be for nothing if the final record doesn't sound right. That's why you have Hunter, who is one of the many people in charge of production quality control. His job entails sitting in this room and listening to records all day long. QCs look for warping and listen for any ticks, pops, and weird noises that might show up during the stamping process. This takes a good ear and some serious concentration. Once they sign off, the record is ready for assembly. We shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but pretty packaging certainly helps. When it comes to records, each vinyl comes wrapped in a paper sleeve, printed with liner notes, as well as a thicker, heavier cardboard jacket. Typically, these are packed by hand, but since United Record Pressing churns out some 40,000 vinyls a day, they have special machines to help with the shrink wrap and stickering process. Then, they're boxed, wrapped, and shipped to your local record store, ready to bring music to your ears. Hey guys, thanks for coming to Nashville to watch how vinyl records are made. Click here to subscribe to Refinery29 and here to watch more videos.